Teresa Fuquay serves as the HBU head track coach, and we're so glad she's here today. She's built a successful program and started the Back the Track campaign. Each year, she supports volunteer events such as the Husky Hustle 5K. In 2017, she received the Hallmark Award during the Spirit of HBU Awards Ceremony, and that had to have felt good. Yeah, it did. A lot of miles running to get that award, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I did ask for, uh, you know, a higher education degree, like <laughs> maybe a master's or doctorate, but anyway, I, it was an amazing honor. Well, yeah. congratulations to you, and mm -hmm. I know it's well-deserved. I've heard so many good things about you. You've been here since 2007. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's quite a story. 11 years of track, a lot of athletes. Yep. Tell me about the memories. Well, um, what's unique about it really is that I started the program in 2007. So coaches really at this level, they don't get the chance to start a program. I mean, coaches move all the time and you go in, you, you know, you inherit athletes and that sort of thing. But to come in and to actually be you know, taking a position in May and being asked to have two teams, you know, complete teams in late August. That was, that was the experience, the real experience of it, the, you know, kind of recruiting, fast forward, you know, spaz recruiting that just getting everything done that you can get done in a pretty short period of time. So um, I can say, you know, there's very few coaches that have gotten the opportunity to do that. It was unique and it was special and, and uh, we really got very fortunate in that summer, 2007, to pick up some athletes that were pretty good athletes, you know, to start off a program, pretty good athletes. So I felt pretty lucky about that. Um, I had assistant, I was also recruiting assistant coaches at that time. So really until August 1, it was just me. So uh, it, was, it was kind of a crazy summer of just <laughs> some... Guess. Recruiting everywhere, but um, I had a lot of support how, how'd here. How did you do that? Um, you know, I remember the very first day sitting with Ron Cottrell. He was the athletic director at that time, and I just said, I need to get out to some meets, and he said, do what you got to do, and, and off I went. And I just, it was a lot of time on the phone. It was a lot of, you know, running around to meets and connecting with coaches from all over. I mean... You know, really, I kind of had two, two things in my mind that I wanted to get done. I wanted to scoop up whatever talent I could that was out there. Uh, the goal was to have 20 men and 20 women by the end of the summer. And um, I wanted to learn as much as I could about HBU so that I could, in some ways, find uh, student athletes that, that really fit here, even though it was, you know, kind of uh, hectic to do that. So. Yeah. And so what have you learned in 11 years of dealing with all these athletes? It stays hectic, <laughs> you know. I mean, you could just never stop recruiting. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the job. That's really the job. Um, I've learned this is a great place to work. Mm -hmm. You get to be around wonderful people that it's, you know, it's just a very positive environment. I love being in education. So um, I don't think it necessarily took the last 11 years for me to figure that out, but um, you know, it's been just a couple things that I've put together. This is an awesome place to work. Now, how did you in 2007 get directed to HBU, Teresa? Well, um, I had a lot of experience in coaching and I've been coaching in Houston my entire career. So that was six years in high school and at that point, 12 years collegiately. So I guess maybe when you know, the administration was looking for somebody to come in. They were looking pretty local, maybe. And, and maybe I was a good candidate in that way. You know, I had a lot of experience. And um, not a experience necessarily on the collegiate level as a head coach, because I was an assistant at the University of Houston. But, you know, I was just one of those coaches that never said no to anything. You know, you need somebody to do this or do that, you know do meat management, you know, whatever was needed. I was always the one. So I got a lot of experiences in that way that maybe a lot of assistant coaches wouldn't otherwise get. 
And so did you ever envision that you would be in Division I with here at HBU? Here at HBU, no, but it is the only vision I really had when I started coaching. I mean, I, I started coaching right out of college um, with the intention of being at this level. Yeah. So it was, it was the goal. It was the mission to be at this level coaching. And so what year did HBU's athletics actually enter Division I? Well, you know, some backstory on this is when I was in college, and I spoke briefly, briefly about it earlier, they did have a Division I track and field program. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I believe it was in 1990 that they lowered divisions and eliminated the program. So I was the resurgence, the re birth, I guess, of track and field Division I. I came from a Division I institution, so I understood that immediately. I knew what was needed. Yep. You know, I knew um, the rules. So um, walked in, and even though um, we didn't necessarily have to totally fit in the rule book uh, year one, uh, I worked very hard to do that. I didn't see any point in slow playing that or easing my way into fully functioning Division I rules. So, so we worked to do that, you know, right from the very beginning. And uh, so tell me about some of the athletes that just kind of stand out in your mind in those 11 years, going to be 11 years this year. This year. Um, gosh, some of the athletes. Well, um, Right off the bat, we, we got a jumper from, as a transfer from Southeastern. His name was Jimmy Joseph. And he was a legitimate good jumper, real good jumper. We, we recruited some sprinters uh, right away, Brittany Gaines, who remains the fra fastest sprinter we've ever had, mm. even now. Wow. Uh, and we've had other, you know, really great athletes since then, but she was probably the best overall sprinter we had uh, on the women's side. We had some great uh, distance runners initially. Uh, Max Mendoza, Matt Perry came a few years later. They uh, hold the modern day records for uh, our distance events from 15 to 10K. And, you know, so um, we had some good athletes come through here early on, and we've got some pretty good athletes right now. What is it that makes an athlete great? I mean, is it all genetics? Is it, is it the way they think? Is it a combination? It's very um, dynamic. It's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. You can't really kind of put your finger on any one thing, but you can't replace hard work regardless of someone's level of talent. And I feel this about literally anything in life you know, that you can't replace hard work. Of course. And um, that is true for great athletes, that often the best athletes are the ones that work the hardest. You know, that's typically how it is. And um, yeah, there's a lot of other, you know, aspects about great athletes that, that make them successful, but really hard work stands out in my mind. Now, you, it, You've been recognized that the Husky Hus Hustle 5K and and this Hallmark Award during the Spirit of HBU Awards ceremony. Tell me about both of those and what went into them. Well, you know, the Husky Hustle is easy. It's a road race. And, uh, you know, I probably did my first road race when I was 13 years old. So, you know, I'm a lot older than that now. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> So, so that was an easy way to kind of tie into what's going on on this campus and particular, particularly the Alumni Association. That's what they do. So we can step in as a track program and many of us have done this before. So we can, we can be helpful, you know. That's really all it is, is just being helpful uh, as far as what's going on on campus. Um, so that was easy. The Hallmark Award, and, and I you know, obviously being tied to the Alumni Association and, and that contribution is what lends itself to the Hallmark Award. Um, that in Back the Track, which Back the Track is an effort at attracting our alumni. You know, it's, 
It's, yeah, it's a fundraising campaign, but it's more about bringing people back yeah. uh, to HBU. It's more about the alumni side of things. I mean, we need the support just as much as anybody. So, right. so um, you know, those two things together, mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of where that Hallmark Award came from. And, and how does the faith, I mean, I, I know this is a unique environment here, different than a lot of other universities, because, you know, we have this central confession that Jesus is Lord, and there's, I mean, I think about Coach, that Ron, that, you know, you can just sense the Lord when you're around him. Right, right. I mean, what has that meant in this environment? Well, it kind of means everything, you know. It's it's how we um, move through the day, you know. It's part of who we are. Um, I said earlier, you know, when I was doing that kind of fast forward recruiting, um, one of the things that I did was I personally had HBU ambassadors and people on campus that took me on a tour. I did everything I could to learn about HBU so that I could go out there and be talking about HBU and who we are as a Christian institution and really, you know, bring in the best possible athletes for HBU. That's, that's all a part of it. That's, um, I guess for lack of a better way of saying it, kind of our niche, it's what makes us different from, you know, the other Division One schools in this city. Yeah. And increasingly needed in a world in which we live. Absolutely. I mean, we see, you know, I, I just think about how success has killed so many people and how ad adulation destroys people. And I mean, it's a tough place to live in this world right now. Yeah. And Jesus Christ is a navigator for us. How do you how do you share spiritual things? I mean, I know running, and it doesn't really seem to be kind of the time to to have the devotional or the prayer. But I know well, that you all have done that so well. How, how do you do that? Well, you know what I'll I'll tell you. I find running very spiritual. I do too. I really do. I mean, I do too. I find being even being out on the track today. I mean, I just put my hands up and went, "Wow, man, we're." very fortunate people. It's all around us. Mm -hmm. I feel that way about Christianity. It's, it's all around us. It's a part of everything we, we say and do. And, um, you know, I just answer it in that way. It's, it's there. It's, ev it's everywhere. And I, I, I definitely, definitely feel like it's there, you know, in running, in sport, you know? Yes. I remember when we took a tour throughout Turkey, which would be Asia Minor in biblical terms, and uh, we literally drove throughout the entire country. And every stop, there was you know a minaret for a mosque and all that. And you know you never saw really any crosses. And you know that was kind of the birthplace of Christianity. And uh, I remember one night deep in Turkey you know, with my son. You know, we were just staring at each other in a hotel room, and and we thought, man, it's just going to be really great to get back to America. <laughs> and when you add Houston to it, you add a whole other level, because I've been to a lot of cities in the country, but Houston is a very unique place. It's not a Christian city, but there's a lot of Christians in it. Mm -hmm. and, and you truly... I mean, have you gotten used to that? It's uh, my wife and I kind of pinch ourselves even now in Houston at how kind people are, and you know how their faith is so real. And yeah, I come from the north where you know that 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 wasn't real. That wasn't like that. I find I find Houston to be like that. I find Texas to be like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from the Midwest. Uh, I think people are more open right. in the South. Um, I don't know. Now tell me, uh, as far as where your program's at now and where is it going, what, give, me, give me the latest and the greatest. Well, um, obviously we're part of the Southland Conference. Yep. So it's a very tough, a very competitive track and field conference. So we have, in our transition from the Great West to the Southland, we've really had to raise the bar a lot. 
Um, we are a better program. I, I feel confident about that as we move from year to year, that we do get better. You know, in, in our world, we mark that by, you know, school records and uh, season's best and, and just the individual improving. Um, but the bar's high. Yeah. The bar's real high. So I know that we have a long way to go. Um, but, yeah, I feel like we are better. We have gotten better year after year. Our Texas uh, in Southland, I mean, what's the geography of the Southland Conference? Well, you know, we're spread out over three states. Um, you know, Arkansas, mostly Texas and Louisiana. So, Three um, states of a lot of great athletes, right? A lot of really good track programs, Yeah, honestly. Um, you know, a lot of, I mean, this is kind of a hotbed for track and field anyway, this part of the country. Because of the weather? Yeah, and um, a little bit of the weather, weather but yeah, because most of the states that are really exceptional in track are in the south. Yeah. So that's probably a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. So we have a big pool of athletes to choose from. We're kind of all going after them. And, and so who does the recruiting on your team? Well, we all do. Yeah. Um, we all do, but we do have a, a recruiting coordinator, my assistant coach, Cesar Figueroa. So he kind of keeps, you know, the eye on all of it, and we all are out there kind of recruiting our own event areas, essentially. And so are you looking for students way in high school? I mean, are you looking down in the... You know, it's not really, well, it's not how we do it necessarily. It's not really the track and field way to target athletes, you know, so young in their high school years, uh, like I see a lot of other, other programs doing. We're out there mostly looking at juniors and especially seniors and, mm -hmm. and people that are kind of in the recruiting year as it is. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's just how we do it. And Teresa, as we come to a close, I want you, what has been the experience, what does HBU mean to you? Well, you know, we, we kind of spoke about it a little bit earlier. Um, you know, I've always just considered myself an educator, and uh, some people don't think coaches are educators, believe it or not. <laughs> but I've always uh, kind of considered myself that. I think this environment of education, uh, the Christian education, is where I belong. It's where I'm most comfortable. Um, I spent my high school years in a Christian school, and now here I am again. It's, it's where I am comfortable. Um, you know, just being, being in this place around all these awesome people. I love that I can walk across this campus and I can, you know, say hello to, you know, the dean of the, you know, nursing school, or uh, say, you know, stop and talk for a few minutes to other instructors on campus. Um, I don't know of a lot of places where you can do that, and I love that about here. You know, it's a it's a wonderful community. I do too. We are talking today to Teresa Fouquet, and she serves as the HBU head track coach. She's built a successful program, and she started the back the track campaign. You can learn more about it at hbuhuskies.com and you can call 281-649-3211 and check out uh, not only the track and program but all of the 17 different Division I athletics that are available through Houston Baptist University. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>